Hi everyone, Adam from RethinkX here. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about how we can solve climate change with technology and disruption. So let's dive right in. Today, 90% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from just three things, energy, transportation, and food. And if you've been following our work or this video series, you know that all three of those sectors will be disrupted by clean technology over the next 10 to 15 years. And that means those three disruptions get us most of the way to net zero emissions. And not by the end of the century, not decades and decades from now, but before 2040. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that energy, transportation, and food are inputs into other goods and services, which means that as they get cleaner, everything else gets cleaner too. So sure, today it takes energy from fossil fuels to make a solar panel, because today we still get most of our energy from fossil fuels. But every time we make a solar panel, a little bit more of the energy for the next one will be clean, because it comes from the first one. And that's a virtuous cycle that accelerates. And that means we're going to build out the majority of the new energy system and the new transportation system with clean energy and clean transportation. Now, the disruptions will get us most of the way to net zero by 2040, and that's amazingly good news. But the bad news is that it's not enough. In environmental jargon, reducing emissions is mitigation. It means stop doing harm. And I use the analogy of a house on fire for climate change, and the flames are the emissions. So mitigation would mean putting out the fire. Now, that's urgent. It's obviously what you have to do first. But are you done when the fire is out? And you're standing there staring at the smoldering ruins of your home? Of course you're not done. Putting out the fire is only half the job. And it's the easy part. The other half is repairing the damage. And that's a lot harder. So that's the bad news. Climate change is a much, much bigger problem than most of us realize. Now, the house on fire analogy brings three inconvenient truths into stark focus. Inconvenient truth number one. Even if all emissions stopped tomorrow, many of the worst impacts of climate change would still occur. There's general agreement in the scientific community that some planetary systems have tipping points. The melting of ice sheets and permafrost, for example. Once transgressed, it may take centuries for the planet to naturally recover without human assistance. And even worse, the 1.1 degrees Celsius of warming humanity has already caused up until now, already caused, has set us on a collision course with some of those tipping points. So that leads directly into the next point, inconvenient truth number two. It's not enough just to reach net zero emissions. The atmosphere and oceans won't magically recover overnight if only we stop harming them. Mitigation alone won't solve climate change. To prevent catastrophe, we also have to do a huge amount of restoration work. That means actively fixing the damage we've done, and not slowly over centuries, but within just the next few decades, or we're still in real trouble. We may need to withdraw as much as 500 billion tons of carbon from the atmosphere and oceans in order to undo the harm we've done over the last several centuries and restore planetary stability. And that brings us to inconvenient truth number three. It is physically impossible physically impossible to solve climate change by reducing our consumption alone. Think about it. No amount of bicycling to work or skipping showers or meatless Mondays will withdraw a single gram of carbon out of the atmosphere. Just as no amount of hosing water on a burning building will repair a single brick or board. Okay, so that's the bad news. But there's more good news too. 
the same technologies that will enable us to solve the mitigation half of climate change will also enable us to solve the restoration half as well. Well, how? Well, by making carbon withdrawal and fixing the atmosphere and oceans affordable. Energy, transportation, food, and labor, they are all foundational sectors. They are cornerstones of the global economy that everything else is built on top of. So when they get cheaper, everything else gets cheaper too. So how exactly can we use cheap energy, transportation, food, and labor to repair the atmosphere and oceans? Well, my team's research indicates that we need to focus on two main strategies. The first is reforestation. This is the oldest, the simplest, the safest way to capture and store carbon. Trees and other vegetation take in CO2 from the atmosphere and use the carbon as the primary building block for all of their tissues. That carbon is then locked up in forest biomass, both above and below ground, and it takes several decades for most types of forests to max out their carbon uptake, but once they do, it's effectively permanent storage. We can do vastly more reforestation than most of my fellow environmental scientists and activists have ever dreamed. Why? Because the disruption of food means that we will free up more than two and a half billion hectares of land from raising and feeding animals. That's an area the size of the United States, China, and Australia combined. So we aren't going to struggle to find land for reforesting. We're going to be inundated by it. But reforestation alone is not enough. My team's calculations show that even in the best case, it would be hard to withdraw more than about 10 gigatons of carbon per year with reforestation. And we need to do about twice that much and sustain it for about 20 years to fully solve climate change. So we need a second option. And my team believes that the best next option by far is ocean alkalinity enhancement. That's a fancy way of saying crush rocks into fine sand and dust and dump them in the ocean. And like reforestation, it just accelerates a natural process. Rain and rivers naturally erode rock from the landscape and wash the silt out into the ocean. Now it looks like the best rock for the job is iron and magnesium silicates like olivine, pyroxene, and serpentine. And that material interacts with CO2 dissolved in seawater through both chemical and biological pathways. And ultimately it ends up as carbonate mineral sediment on the seafloor. It's part of the planet's natural carbon cycle that normally helps keep CO2 levels stable. And the icing on the cake is that this natural process alkalinizes or deacidifies the ocean, which means that we could solve the huge problem of ocean acidification at the same time as solving climate change. Now, natural erosion is slow, so we need to accelerate it. The volume of the world's oceans, the total volume, is 1.3 billion cubic kilometers. Now the Amazon River sends about one cubic kilometer of sediment into the Atlantic each year. And we need maybe another 15 of those or so for a couple of decades. Now 15 cubic kilometers of rock per year, that's a lot. But keep in mind, humanity already mines about 30 cubic kilometers of material in total each year. So this would be another 50% more on top of what we already do. Not an insane amount, but still a huge challenge to ramp up quickly. So what would all this reforestation and ocean alkalinity enhancement cost? With today's technologies, something like $100 per ton, but the cost could drop by a factor of 10 to 100 if it were done at huge scale by autonomous electric vehicles and machines powered by cheap, clean energy. See the connections there? My team currently estimates a total cost of less than five trillion, or about 250 billion per year over a 20 year period. Not nothing, still a lot of money, but only about one quarter of 1% of global GDP. That's totally doable. And to save the world? Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Okay, that's it for today. 
As always, there are links to the book and Rethink X's other work in the description. And if you haven't already, please be sure to help us spread the message of optimism and help us help the world understand technology and disruption by subscribing, giving us a thumbs up. Thank you everyone for watching. And just remember, the future is brighter than you think. We'll see you all next time. Take care.